Okay. Hmm. <coughs> okay, we'll get started. Um, what we did so far is we've reviewed the first exercise. And now <coughs> some of you have signed up for the topics that you wish to talk about on next, uh, that you wish to do for exercise number two. And uh, exercise number two has to do with um, <coughs> um, you're going to use some of these research uh, tools and topics that were discussed in chapter 10 on research. And you're going to give a presentation about a particular topic. So if you have, for example, background research, uh, which is on the list, then you will talk about background research. And all of most of these uh, topics are listed in uh, chapter 10. So when I put up this slide at the last lecture, I also pointed to which pages they talked about each of these topics. And um, so you can look back on the video from last lecture if you want to get whatever was written on the board at that time. And that's uh, November 5th. You're going to do a five minute presentation about your topic. And to deliver, you have to deliver whatever you use as uh, PowerPoints and whatever notes you might take about that. So that's explained in exercise number two. And then in exercise number three, <coughs> we're going to make use of um, some of the things we talked about today in chapter 11, which is about strategy. Okay, so <coughs> although I had uh, planned to talk about both chapters 11 and 12, these are both important chapters. So we're just going to talk about chapter 11 today, and then we'll talk about 12 next week. <coughs> and then <coughs> it seems like I will skip chapter <coughs> 13, which is uh, <coughs> about education in general. <coughs> and I will give some discussion of chapter 14, but the main, <coughs> the most important ones are 10, 11, and 12 coming up. <coughs> okay. Okay, so um, <coughs> chapter 11 is about strategy, <coughs> and uh, the idea is that you're <coughs> either, <coughs> you're either modifying a <coughs> web page or you're, you're building a new one. <coughs> and the <coughs> idea is you go from research, you've been doing research about the web page, and you want to be able to uh, design a high-level conceptual framework for how you go from research to actually to building the web page. Uh, so uh, this is the, based on the research design and strategy that balances and needs uh, to involve the following ingredients. You have administration, so you have to identify, like, once it's built, how is it going to be maintained? How is new information going to be added to the web page? And uh, this is often uh, like a political question. So you have to understand the organization in which you're building the web page or the website in. And then you have the technological integration. You need to look at what tools already exist and if you need to add any additional tools. So. Um, like for the Molde Jazz website, uh, maybe at one point when they were developing this website, they had a list of events, but they didn't necessarily have a database. And uh, so at some point, they integrated a database that would allow you to um, maybe uh, register and pay for uh, tickets or see what's available. And uh, so if there's something like the, the website you're <coughs> looking at 
uh, needs uh, some modifications or changes, you have to see what you already have and what you might need. And then the emphasis, where, what is the focus? Is it top down or bottom up? <coughs> and a lot of times the organization or the primary hierarchy of the site is a top down system or top down scheme. So there's the, the ones that are owning the site and maintaining the site, they will decide what are the main categories, what, are the, what is the global navigation system, and what pages will exist with underneath this, uh, the main pages. And sometimes they also integrate this with a bottom-up approach for content creation. So even though you might have a list of products and description about products and links to other products like Amazon might have uh, links to other books that are on the similar topics and so forth. There also can be a um, bottom-up addition of information from end users, like uh, customer reviews or um, being able to um, uh, tag uh, information so that you can find other related information. So some parts of the website may also have a bottom-up emphasis. And then there's um, uh, labeling and organization. Usually the labeling and organization also follows the hierarchical scheme or the, the primary hierarchy, which is usually a top-down approach. And this is also talked about on page 266. Um, Um, <coughs> then there's also um, a meta field definition, and um, <coughs> so uh, you might need to know what are the fields uh, that I use uh, for defining um, metadata about the information, and how are they defined uh, globally and specifically. So if these are going into any type of uh, search engine, you need to identify how these fields are identified. Um, if it's a global um, field, uh, then it's this, uh, this is metadata that might apply to the en entire site. Uh, but if it's a local one, then it, it might apply to a subsite or a portion of the site. Um, and this usually has to do with the, then integrated with the navigation system. So if I use a top-down approach, uh, I might have, um, like information about um, who is the, um, well, like the owner of the site. Let me just see if I can find something. Um, Okay, so they give an example about like a, a website that might carry news articles and there might be part of the news article that appears on every page on the site. And in that case it would be a global metadata field, like it could be the date for example, uh, which a date field would exist on every site. Um, it could be the like business in the, in the like news sites mm -hmm. they might have different areas like uh, business and um, sports or culture. So these are kind of global metadata uh, fields. Okay. okay. Uh, so the strategy is to, uh, it's like a process. 
and the process is you go from if you're a team, like your team of information architectures who are going to be designing the site, you go from where you just kind of brainstorm ideas. And then you can use like tools to be able to express your ideas. You can use uh, diagrams or um, metaphors or stories. And you might uh, sketch out some very rough uh, wireframes for your ideas. <coughs> so that's articulating uh, what, you're th what you're thinking about. And then communicating it is when you want to communicate it with a larger community like your bosses and the different teams that are working on it. And uh, this, they say, <coughs> can be difficult to, to do, but it's also important to be able to communicate your ideas. And that's discussed on page 270. And then test is <coughs> when you actually have produced some kind of uh, wireframes and blueprints, and then you want to be able to, you have a rough uh, outline of how your site's going to look and you want to test like where labels should be and what types of labels you should use. And you can use, for example, <coughs> the card sorting method that we talked about the last time. <coughs> uh, the idea with this, uh, this process is it, it's very interactive and it has many, it's also very iterative. So it has a lot of different cycles that it goes through. So you might have some ideas, you might articulate this, express it, you communicate it with other groups and then test it out, and then you go through this again. And the output of this process is uh, several things. One is the information architecture strategy report, uh, and then the presentation, and then they usually come up with a project plan for design, which is uh, can include also the budget and the schedule. So uh, what you're going to be doing at the end in um, in project number three is you're going to be producing this report and this presentation uh, using uh, as uh, information architect uh, consultants you're going to produce a report and presentation and then um, this usually the report might also contain like just basically the um, schedule and the budget or something but it's it can also be a separate thing separate document Okay, so um, <coughs> the first stage of uh, thinking uh, was is like usually just a brainstorming session, and the way that you communicate your ideas, which is the second step, is you can use uh, different approaches. You can use metaphor exploration, and that is that you have um, <coughs> different kinds of metaphors which help you to understand the situation. So if you have an organizational metaphor. It connects the user experience to organizational structure people are familiar with, like going to a car dealer, or it may be like uh, um, going to a restaurant or something like that, or going going to a hotel and how you check into a hotel. So there may, there can be a, some kind of a metaphor that's used to conceptually organize how your website will be organized. But they say that you don't use these metaphors throughout the whole design process. You're just using it in the beginning to understand, um, help people understand the concept. And then you have a functional metaphor, which might have to do with uh, actually doing a task, like browsing a bookshelf, or it could be uh, buying something, going, you know, taking the shopping cart idea and going through the checkout. So that's like a functional metaphor. A visual metaphor is when you have uh, you use familiar images to help understand the concepts behind, like you have uh, a yellow background for yellow pages in a telephone lookup uh, application, or you might have some icons, telephone icons that connect to the phone book or the directory. <coughs> and again, do not try to connect the metaphor <coughs> throughout the website design. It's just to help people understand the, the and brainstorm ideas. And then you could also make use of um, scenarios, which help you to get an idea of how you expect people to uh, use the site. So you have, um, you create different situations 
of how different types of users or users with different tasks will interact with the site. And then you have uh, case studies. You compare and contrast this strategy to cases where things work and where things didn't work in the past. So usually uh, this is kind of hard to do because you may not have past experience to look at. Uh, but you can also, you can imagine like different types of user groups that will make use of the site and how, uh, where they might find the information they're looking for and how they would uh, step through it. <coughs> and then uh, for communicating, you can also use blueprints and wireframes, and this is also used more in the design phase. Uh, blueprints show the relationship between pages and other uh, content components, and wireframes are visuals that show the content and links of major pages and websites. And uh, these are talked about more in page um, uh, wireframes on page 278 and in chapter 12. On page uh, 276, there's a, an example of a uh, metaphor that's used for a reference center where it uses like, uh, also images. Okay. Um, conceptual design. Um, this is an example of conceptual design uh, diagram that shows like when you're trying to convey this information to other people, you're trying to give them an idea of how information should be grouped. Uh, you can show this as um, a way that says that this email is um, um, more important, for, for example, than um, the local intranet sites. So it's just the size of the cloud indicates the importance of the the concept. Okay. But the the biggest uh, contribution in this chapter is how you um, make use of the strategy report, or how you write the strategy report. And from page 279 and on, there's kind of a, an example of a strategy report for a site weather.com. And first they show the table of contents, which is just the main sections. And then they talk about the different types of <coughs> what should be included in the strategy report. So you should have ex an executive summary, and that's talked about on page 280. And the executive su summary should just uh, basically highlight uh, what is going to be in the report and what is the main uh, group you're going to be, um, what is the main thing you're trying to accomplish. And then the page 281 is the audience's mission and vision for the site. You outline who are the main customers, and what is the mission statement, and they actually give a mission statement on um, yeah, some things on page 281. So they said uh, the weather.com will be the best weather website on the intranet, and then it goes on for an entire paragraph. And so they tell you how they're going to make use of, how they're going, what is their goal. <coughs> and then you have um, audiences, and they talk about like the different types of user roles and audiences. So on page 282, they have um, different typical types of users, like those that are just uh, looking up things for convenience sake, and uh, those that are like maybe planners, and they're looking, they want, they care about um, um, the forecast for a particular region because maybe they're tourist companies and they want to know what the weather is going to be like at a particular time of year, and so they have to refer to the site so they, they can attract customers. <coughs> uh, they have other cities that might be interested, and then they have uh, those that are just um, 
just curious about how the weather is in different places and so forth. So they have they have it broken down into different four different roles as an example. So those are different types of users, and then they have. Um, um, Okay, lessons learned on page 282. So these are the things that you learned from your analysis previously. And there's a table that's on page 282 and 283 that shows that you have um, the, or the organization of the website is broken down into several uh, areas. Like they have it local and organization and content, general organization and content, navigation, labeling, features. And then they analyzed from their research how these sections functioned. And they identified like who, th what they're for and how they performed. And then they also have implications for the architecture, like what, tried to identify what needs to be changed in those areas. So it's just like a very general uh, analysis of what, what should be, what those sections should do and how they could be changed. <coughs> and then architecture strategies and approaches. Um, page 283 to 285, there's an example in figure 11.9, which is a blueprint. There's an example in figure 11.10, which is wireframe. And there's an example in figure 11.11, which is a model. And um, the way <laughs> Uh, this is talked about is that the blueprint is the connection between concepts. So figure 11.9 on page 284 shows the, um, the main um, page and how it's uh, broken down into different areas. And there's like a, there's a global focus and then there's a local focus. And then the figure 1110 is, so that's like just conceptually how the different areas are connected. And then 1110 is the wireframe, which is more like a rough layout of how, what the site actually looks like. And the site um, has different areas or different elements. So they have, for example, on uh, page 283, they have the element city, state, zip code, search box, which is A. And if you look on page on figure 1110 on page 285, there's a search box at the top. Okay, so they identified that as an element, and then they describe um, what it does and the implications for um, <coughs> um, access to the weather should be through a prominent search box. So this is why this is needed. So they're identifying different parts of the website that is needed and why it's needed. Uh, and B is the local search, um, find the local search map breadcrumbs. Yeah. But uh, I think this is expanded on in the next chapter when they talk about wireframes. But it's just an example of that they have a section on wireframes. And then figure 11, 11 is the distributed content architecture. So they have both figure 11.9, uh, which is a conceptual blueprint. And this is also like a conceptual blueprint, but it's more for the distributed architecture. So the local, the local one is how people interact with the site locally. And this uh, distributed content is how this website interacts with other websites. Okay. So then I have, um, so this, this one models is the conceptual model that how this website interacts with other websites because they figure that there's also other websites that are giving weather information or interacting with this website. And then they have content management. It includes roles, resources, templates, metadata, and thesaurus. And this is um, 
if you're developing metadata for the site, you need to look at the examples of the type of metadata elements you will be using, and um, and then before you can actually identify what um, information you're going to collect. So on page 287, there's an example of the metadata elements that could be used for the weather in the news main page, and have author, publisher, title, date, and then examples of how that information would would look. So then you have the, the project plan is um, uh, created this stage in order to keep track of and help later when you get the, the, to the design phase. And it should include the uh, timelines and the teams and the budgets. We're going back to the other page. We have so we have the strategy report, the strategy presentation, and the project plan. So that is the project plan. So this is more like uh, schedules and budgets. And then the presentation is um, <coughs> really reports on what is in, this, in these two documents. So it makes a presentation to communicate your recommendations to the right groups of people, those who maybe that will be using the site, the management, and make sure that you have the basis and structure in, into a logical order, uh, sales perspective, and use metaphors. <coughs> so you can use the metaphors that you developed before. Um, the part here on, <coughs> on uh, blueprints and wireframes, go, we go into a lot more detail in Chapter 12 about that. But this is more to emphasize what sections should be in the strategy report. So you need to be able to uh, identify what's, what's the main change that's going to happen or what are you going to develop, who is going to be using the site, what is the mission of the site, uh, what do you learn from an, uh, your research where you looked at the prior website, and <coughs> What types of, uh, how do the different concepts relate to each other? How does the web page, the concepts within the web page relate to each other? How does the web page or the website relate to other websites, people that might be entering it from other sites? And then <coughs> the wireframes are the actual kind of the rough <coughs> look of how it looks. And um, yeah, these blueprints are also similar to these types of models where this is an internal model and this is related to others. Okay. So content management also has to do with how are you going to add data to the site afterwards? So what are the rules for being able to search, uh, build it into your navigation system, how you will be able to access the content afterwards? How will the website scale and grow? <coughs> So, um, basically that's it. Mm. I don't think I have a picture. <coughs> I guess it comes later. Yeah, actually. This one. So this is the figure on 11.10. And as I said, we're going to talk about this in Chapter 12 as well. <coughs> but this is um, pointing out that A is the A on page 283, where they talk about city elements and the description and the implement, implement implications. And then B is here. <coughs> So the wireframes basically show how the page should appear and how you would, at this point um, <coughs> in the architectural strategies, you're trying to identify uh, what already was there and how it worked and what are the implications, whether or not you need 
certain elements and where they should be located. Okay. Okay. So that's it for today. Next uh, week uh, we'll talk about chapter 12 and also probably 14. And then the week after that you'll have uh, this assignment number two is due.